you got a piece of cast iron that sort of sounds like this, feels like this, stick around. I'm going to give you my number one tip. It's going to take that brand new rough pre-seasoning off there to a smooth as glass finish. My name is Kent Rollins. I want to thank y'all so much for joining us. In this video today, we are going to show you how to smooth out rough cast iron. I'm talking the stuff they pre-season. Now, the pre-seasoning I'm talking about is the stuff they put on this cast iron to think that they're saving y'all some time and some effort. The ones I'm really talking about, folks, is the Lodge cast iron. So if you've got a piece of pre-seasoned cast iron and it is rough, gritty feeling to your touch, I'm going to tell you how to take care of it. When you start out with something smooth, you're going to season quicker, build up season easier, and have that smoother finish. If you need more ideals or more help with your cast iron to get it in the best shape it's ever been in its life, Shan, my little sweet wife, has created a link that is down below. It is a playlist, and we've also created a step-by-step -step guide that is everything this video is about, how to smooth cast iron. It will be in the description below. Always keep that thing handy because you might need it. You can go back to it, find out anything you need to know. So let's quit beating around the bush and let's get some of this rough cast iron smoothed out to where we can cook up some goodness. You go to the store and you buy cast iron today, 99.9% .9 of the time, it is something they call pre-seasoned. Now they want you to cook out of it right off the bat. I'm telling you, don't. That stuff is like a polymerized coating of a high temp soy oil that they put on there. You ever felt a truck bed liner? Run your hand across it, you'll know what I'm talking about. You will eventually get that rough coating covered in 26 and a half years of cooking. I don't wanna wait that long. So how are we gonna fix it? Well, I'm gonna tell you folks. This is the only time Shannon will let a mouse in the kitchen, I promise. Where is it at? Whew. Magic. It is here. Just one of them little sanders. They cause a mouse. You can get one of them orbital sanders. You could do this by hand if and you got to. Now, I got a 60 grit paper on there today. The lower the number, the rougher the paper. Now, I like to use a 60 to an 80 sometime along in there. Now you need to realize when we go to sanding this, we're not going down to dull gray, nothing on it cast. I just want to get their rough stuff off there. Then we can build that finish up to something that's going to be non-stick. It's not a very long process. This is not going to be a half a day deal. I'm talking like maybe at the most 10 minutes. I don't think it's going to take that long. So hang on. I'm going to tell you folks, you... You see, this got a little point on it, so make sure you get in the curve right here in the bottom of this skillet and up them sides just a little. And we nearly there. I can begin to see some color in there. We get that wiped out, I think we're in pretty good shape. Sometimes, folks, that's going to gum up that first round. So, hey, they make some more. Just get you another sticker on there and go back to town. You won't have much trouble the second round because you done got most of that gunk off there the first round. I'm not taking all that off there plumb down to the bare, I promise you. So I'm going to wipe this over here to where I can sort of feel it around these corners just a little bit more because you need to be able to take your finger in there and make sure because if you leave this rough down there in these corners, something's going to always want to stick there. It's not plumb down to the black bare shiny metal everywhere. I just want to make sure that I get that rough stuff off there. So folks. We got this sanded down smooth. I can feel it. It is good to go. We're going to show you how to rebuild that seasoning on this skillet to get that slick, glossy finish that you can slip an egg out. Whether you've just sanded off a bunch of rust or you burnt something in an old fire pit to get rid of it to start plumb over, this is starting over. We're going to rebuild that seasoning up to where we got that slick, glossy finish. We do this to rebuild that seasoning up there. You're getting three really good benefits out of it right off the bat. Number one, non-stick. Number two, easier to clean. Number three, your food gonna taste a whole lot better. Rinse this old skillet out. I'm gonna dry that excess water out of it. See, can I get this newfangled thing to work here called a stove? And I'm gonna turn it up on about medium high heat because I've got to get this to where it's dry before you season because we cannot season cold cast iron. It's not gonna accept it. It's not gonna get hot enough that it's gonna bond to. That's what this baking process is going to create here in a minute. It takes cast a little while to heat up, so we're going to put it on there. When you pour that oil in there, if it is smoking, it is too hot. 
but it ain't going to be too hot. It's going to be just right. And y'all have seen me in the past always use some olive oil. Sure, I use olive oil on my old stuff now because it has been slick and finished for so many years. But I got to using some flaxseed oil when I was starting out with brand new stuff or stuff that was refurbished and we're going to reseason. We're going to take some of this flaxseed oil and we're just going to pour some in there. Now, when you're first time seasoning this and building back, it's going to take more than what it would just everyday care. So you're going to put a little more oil in there than eight or four or five drops. So get you a good lint-free rag. And the handle might be hot now, so make you have something you can hang on to. Make sure you get it all wiped around, up to the sides, everywhere. Now, we've preheated that oven, like I said, to 350. So this is hot enough that we can go in there so we can turn that burner off. We're ready to go. And if Shan will get in here where you can see, you can see there is a good coat of oil on this thing. So we're going to put this in the oven on the middle rack of the oven at 300 degrees for about 40 minutes. And then we're going to turn it off and let it cool all on its own. This is not a one-time process, I promise you. We're going to do this three times before we can get that surface to go to building up. As you can see, it's cool enough for me to handle. It's been in there about 40 minutes. Let's turn it plumb off, let it come to about room temperature. But guess what? It's time to do it again. Now, we made some progress here. I can see some things taking place. Where this was pretty shiny in here, you can see that we're beginning to build some gold up over here, some layer. So as we get another and another one on there, we're gonna go to get this black that we wanna see on there. Let's put the oven back on 300, let it preheat, heat this skillet. Magic. When it gets temperature like we did before to where we know it's warm enough that it'll take this seasoning, we're going to pour again a pretty generous amount in there, lint-free rag all the way around, back in the oven, another 40 minutes, let it cool again, then we'll look and see where we're at. Well, folks, as you can see, we've done this about, this is my third trip, and this thing is slick, it is good. Now, you can see we lost that silver, and we're getting more to that goldish bronze color in here. Now, you don't have to continue to do this till it's solid black all the way across. Now, go to frying bacon in here, frying potatoes, because cast it does love some starch. And every time you fry something in it, the more you use it, the better the seasoning is going to be. Now, if you ever use a skillet or a Dutch oven and it tastes a little like metal, you ain't near there yet. Seasoning will cover that. It'll make your food taste better. But if you go to tasting metal in something, you know you ain't weren't far enough. Now, folks, I want to stress to you, Putting this in the oven and baking this seasoning on that way, that is for this instance. When you're starting from scratch and building up seasoning on cast iron going forward, if you're starting with something that's rusted plumb up or you're having to start with a brand new oven, this is the way you start it. So folks, we hope you learned something about how to take care of that rough pre-seasoned cast iron. Now, like we said in the video, not all of it comes this way. There is new stuff that you can buy that has a slick pre-season finish. I'm mostly talking about the lodge and all that stuff that comes pre-finished that is so rough. Get in there and take care of that cast iron because remember, it is something that will give back to you every time you cook out of it. Thank you for stopping by. God bless you each and every one. Hit the little subscribe button. Really? How about some mascara too? No. Huh? Oh. Okay, let me see. Yeah, I think that's helpful. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's always been my favorite pastime. <laughs>